Howdy everyone, Pocho here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we're moving into another qualifier match for the AI Championships. In this match we have Team 25, Fable Dude Stories going up against Team 14, Outback Gorby. These two players are, Gorby's quite an old player actually and Fable Dude is newish to the game. I think he's been playing four months now, maybe five. I could be completely wrong. If I am, I apologize. But we had Gorby win the coin flip and he passed the first move over to Fable and we went straight into the bands with the bands coming Sendarial first from Fable going to Magnus from Gorby. Two strong bands. Sendarial, okay bands seeing as there are other wild elves on the team. So getting rid of a leadership ability. Strong, strong, strong. And Magnus, of course, because Magnus. Then we got Tyros ban and the Karana. Tyros, obviously another strong ban. You do not want your opponent getting Tyros first, which makes you wonder why he's banning Tyros first, Fable Dude, because if he leaves that character on the field, Fable gets the first choice. So he can play it in a way where he could ban shitty heroes, making sure there is a prime hero ready for taking when the time comes. Karana, strong ban, heals, resurrect. You do not want them on the field unless you can think you can secure a character on the board which can lock down the healer. Then you might be okay, but it's just not a risk worth taking. Karana, a good ban. Final bans, Maeglin and Orahai. Maeglin actually does a fair bit of damage, can hide himself, can guarantee crit, I believe it is. When he hides, I think his next two attacks after he hides are guaranteed crit. So, strong band. You don't want that on your opponent's team and Oroheim. Essentially, with the setup, most players want to get rid of the high damage dealers. The high damage dealers are the biggest threats, especially when there are no real team formations. So, <clears throat> getting rid of high damage dealers. Always good. Getting rid of leadership abilities are good and getting rid of healers are also good. So overall, I think pretty solid bans from both players. Nothing I really question. I think it's safe that everything here is done with good intention and being thought out properly. Moving on to the first choice in Heroes. Fable going first. He sticks to the Rock. Strong choice. I think Rock is probably the best hero on the field at the moment. So getting him first. Strong. Followed by Outback going with the... Fire and the Pig Boy. Pig Boy, interesting choice, especially having Fire and having many casters on the field. I feel like casters would have been the better choice over Pig Boy, but Pig Boy, he's not horrible. He's not a horrible damage dealer, so solid pick nonetheless. Moving on to the next selection of heroes, we have the Idril and the Belara from Fable. Those are two characters that would have done quite well with Gorby. Followed by Gorby picking up the Blood Priest and Tanita. So Fable has a lot of CC on his team at the moment. The Rock Freeze, the Idril Sleep, the Belara Stun. Now obviously Belara isn't as strong, or Belara Sleep, sorry, but Belara isn't as strong since there is no Denea leader on the field. But <clears throat> the only issue he has here is the Idril Sleep. He's different to the Belara Sleep, where the damage from his team can wake them up. So it's really hard to try and play Idril into a team. Moving on to Gorby, so we have the Blood Priest pick and the Tanita pick. The Blood Priest kind of countering the Fire as he does a little worse with Dark Heroes on the team. But Blood Priest overall is a pretty decent healer, but he's decent because of the damage he does. He has great AoE damage. And it's a solid amount of damage as well. And he does have the ability to sacrifice his own health and heal his allies. So overall, a pretty solid choice. And we have the Tanita, a glass cannon. Honestly, in this competition, I think Tanita is pretty high up there just because he can whip out a lot of damage quite quickly. Moving on to the final picks, we have the Stealthy and the Velandar from Fable side. Stealthy, I think, again, is a very underrated hero, especially in the tournament. She can whip out a lot of damage. And the Velandar, I feel like he has picked all the heroes that would benefit Gorby way more. So I don't know if his strategy was to counter Gorby's picks, but overall he's pretty much has a caster team with a uh, damage dealer, pure damage dealer. Last pick is the Infernus on the on Gorby's side, a dark range damager, but we all know Infernus 
He's a solid damage dealer, can apply dots, good single target. Overall, pr pretty nice pick. Moving on to the subs, we had the Akrashat from Fable and the Schnee from Gorby. To be honest with this board, this is probably one of the worst boards we've seen in the tournament. And the picks here are pretty slim. You do not really have a lot to go with. But there is the Aratar on the field. I feel like Aratar and Tahit would have been better over the Akrashat. Having a damage dealer over a tank that just cannot support your team in any way would have been a solid pick. And the Schnee from Gorby. Schnee, pretty solid pick. Again, can give himself high critical hit. I believe I think he can buff himself with a bonus critical hit so he can do a bit more damage but I feel like he'd want I feel like Aratar Aratar would have been the best pick here since he can self heal he can do decent damage I think it just would have been a bit more sustained from having him on the team but these are the picks from the two team uh, players I think overall they've done quite well but it all depends on the AI and how these teams play out so we'll jump into the arena and see how it all goes Moving into the first Battle Fables team is full of damage and support as Gorby's team has a bit of healing on his but there is a fair bit of damage as well mainly through AoE with the Tamita being a single target so in this case Fable needs to take out the healer before Gorby's damage takes out his characters as you can see Rock very close to dying AoE coming out dots on Fable's team as Priest and Rocker first to fall, bring it to a 4v4 situation. Healer out, so it is now a pure damage battle with Fyra being able to add some support to his team. But how is their damage going to supply? It shouldn't be too bad since there are Dark Heroes on Gorby's team. AoE coming out from Big Boy Tanita Falls. It is a 4v3 situation, but a lot of. <coughs> Fable Sim is in critical HP. It's 3v3 now, with Stealthy being very low. Zelandar adding, adding some support to the team, but is it going to be enough? The Pig Boy getting critical HP. The Stealthy falls with the Pig Boy. It's a 3v1 situation, and it looks like Gorby is going to be able to take this first point as Zelandar does fall, and Gorby's characters are in critical HP. Very, very close first battle. Their teams were both being whittled down quite quickly. But first point, going to Gorby. We are going to take the video over to the competitors. They're going to watch it and see if they're going to use their sub-hero or not. Moving into the second battle, both players have decided to keep their teams exactly the same. The AoE is about to come out from Gorby. It's a good freeze from Rock and the sleep from Idril, but AoE takes the sleeps away, which is really unfortunate. Fable really needs to... He needs to start taking out some players. The Rock dies and Priest is on low HP. If he can take out Priest, he's going to prevent the healing. It will be his best chance. Will they be able to take Priest out? He's so close to dying. I think they will be able to. He does die, but Fable is already in critical HP with two characters in the red. Wow, Gorby is in a pretty good state right now. If the AoE comes out from Pig Boy and Stealthy is so close to dying, taken out by Tanita. 3v4 now with Idril next to go, taking it down to two players unfortunately sealing the fate of fable at this point i don't think he can come back from this even with aoe whatever nothing nothing is going to prevent the damage output from gorby's team and gorby takes the second point giving him both points eliminating fable from the competition we'll move over to the leaderboard now and see where everyone is sitting and move on from there so going over the leaderboard, we have Fable Dude Stories unfortunately eliminated from the competition and Outback Gorby moving on and he will be versing Raven Beefheart in the quarter finals. We have three more matches left of the qualifiers and we will have our final 16 competitors and it will start to get intense from there on in. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you are in the world, until next time, Please take care of yourself.